Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie. Today I will be talking about two romance books. This one and this one. I've already read them, but I wanted to give a precursor because as always, this video ended up being really not what I had planned. I had started a, a vlog of a bunch of romance books and then I realized that I cannot read one genre for more than two books in a row. It's just a thing I'm going through. So I'm about to give you the summary of these two books before I read them, the vlog of them, and then a little something afterwards. Um, just fair warning, I didn't really enjoy this book. I know I'm kind of ruining the vlog, but I was kind of rude. <laughs> and I don't want to be a bitch to anyone that really enjoyed this. So I just want to warn you that in the heat of reading this, I, I was just a little rude. Okay, I'm sorry. Although at the end, in my final thoughts, I'll probably say something I haven't filmed that part yet. That makes it come full circle because I have some thoughts after the fact, having read both of these. So without further ado, here is this mess of a vlog. First, we have Thank You For Listening by Julia Whelan. This actually was on my TBR slash new releases for the month. I got the audiobook because Julia Whelan is uh, narrating it. I almost forgot the word for narrating. This is a, I think it's a romance between audiobook narrators. And I started it yesterday and so far it's very funny. Our main character is on a plane listening to like a romance novel. There's a small child next to her and somehow the phone gets loose of the, the cord and the very mm, spicy scene starts playing at full volume in front of this very small child. So it's a fun time. We have The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I love a bodyguard romance. Although I picked this out before I actually read the majority of the flap. She is the bodyguard, which I was excited for because I've never read a bodyguard romance where a woman is the bodyguard. It's very cool. He is a famous actor, which I didn't realize. I thought he was like a surfer or something. And I also didn't realize that this involves fake dating. So he, his mom gets sick, he goes home to Texas and he doesn't want them knowing that he has a bodyguard or that he has a stalker, which is why he hired a bodyguard. So he asks her to pretend to be his girlfriend. And for some reason, that's not turning me off of the book. I'm like weirdly more excited to read it, which is weird. I don't like fake dating. So we're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna start this, but I wanna read the first sentence with you. Uh, if you guys are new to my channel, I like to read the first sentence of all the books I start, unless it's like an audiobook or if I forget. This one though is, mother's dying wish was for me to take a vacation. Oh, my mother's, God damn, I can't even read correctly. This author has previously written how to walk away, things you save in a fire, that rings a bell, but I've never read any of this author's work. Happiness for beginners, the movie adaptation of her novel, The Lost Husband hit number one on Netflix. Maybe I'll try to watch that this week. She's been compared to both Jane Austen and Nora Ephron. Damn. The book itself is giving me energy. It's nice and yellow and it has these bright pink end pages. Is that what these are called? Guys, it's late and I'm only on page 10. I just started, but so far, um, it is a little different in narration than I'm used to. It almost feels kind of YA because it's like the main character is kind of talking to us, but not in a breaking the fourth wall kind of way, mostly in a, in a way they do in the movies where it's like they need to info dump, so they make it conversational. But I'm not, I'm not minding it. It's just like, have I explained what I do for a living? My life doesn't make much sense if you don't know what my job is. So it's kind of like she's talking to us. In the first chapter, we find out she's actually dating someone in her bodyguard, I don't know, team. And they were supposed to go to Madrid together, but her mother died. And her boss is like, mm, girl, you need to like chill for a little bit. Her boss sends the main character's best friend and boyfriend to Madrid. So I'm wondering if they end up getting together, which would be messy AF and would very much hurt our main character's feelings. I feel like I want to read tonight until the two main characters at least meet. Okay guys, I made it to page 50. I'm so tired. I took some melatonin, so I'm like, Ugh. they have finally met. And also her boyfriend dumped her almost immediately after I stopped talking to you a minute ago. I thought he was going to be like one of those nice ex-boyfriends where maybe they just didn't fit together, but he was kind of a dick. 
He told her he broke up with her for three reasons. One, she's a workaholic. Two, she's boring and not fun. And three, that she's a bad kisser. Like, I don't care how bad at kissing you are. You don't tell someone that. She seems to be really kind of closed off to her emotions though. So that's gonna be fun for her to discover because this is a romance. However, I am not really digging the way that this is written because I thought that the tone of, I don't know what I was talking about earlier, it's continuing on. Like her boss is explaining to her who this celebrity was, the love interest. And she says to us, I'm sure you know who that is. I'm sure you guessed when he said his name and it's like, no, I, I really would rather you just tell us your story. So yeah, still having quick with the writing style. Um, she showed up at his house, the main love interest. Her name is Hannah and his name is Jack. So Hannah showed up at Jack's house and he thought she was a cleaning lady. He didn't even realize that his management team had hired a bodyguard. So that's kind of funny. So yeah just seems good so far. But no offense to Catherine Center. I don't know if Jane Austen or Nora Ephron are really that comparable so far, which might be rude, but at least I didn't call you a bad kisser. Hey guys, welcome to Thursday. I am working right now. Well, I'm on a break right now, but I have, thank you for listening on audiobook, like I mentioned earlier. However, today I got my library copy of The Bodyguard, the audio version from my library. So I'm trying to figure out which one to, to listen to while I'm working. I got through my toughest files today. So I'm kind of just like able to listen and work at the same time. And I wish you could answer me in real time. I guess that's what Instagram's for, but I don't know if I'd get enough feedback uh, like immediately. So I might try the audiobook of The Bodyguard because I was kind of struggling with how it's talking to the reader. Um, so maybe I would enjoy that more audibly. I'll give it a shot and I'll let you know in a second. Well, not a second. Well, a second for you, not for me. Shut up, Allie, go back to work. Also, I'm eating a giant Slim Jim and a Dr. Pepper. This is what nutrition looks like, people. Okay, I really like the audiobook. Um, <laughs> there's a couple things happening that just don't seem accurate. Obviously, I've never been a bodyguard before, but something just happened where our main dude, Jack, is being really nice to Hannah, our main girl. And he decides to drive her home and then drive himself back. And then he's gonna pick her up the next day. The whole point of her being the bodyguard is so that he is never alone. I just, I don't get that. I think how fake dating is set up is sometimes the annoying part for me. And this is a good setup. Like it makes sense for them to be together and even for his safety to pretend to have a bodyguard. And so I like that. And I like how much she loves her job, but it does feel like someone who doesn't know anything about being a bodyguard is writing this book, which is rude of me. I'm like kind of roasting this author and I feel bad because this is fun. Hey guys, I'm on page 150 and I'm getting frustrated because our main characters have been together 24 hours and she decides that she can't handle it because she's falling in love with him. A woman who's literally never loved anyone. And there hasn't been any angst or pining or anything. She just kind of blurted that out in her head to us. And I don't like that. I wish we had some buildup. Other than that, it was going fine. They were acting like friends. So you think it would be friends to lovers, but she's randomly in love with him. And now she's like, I can't handle him acting fake when it's real for me. And they've, they've literally spent 24 hours together. And she didn't even seem like she liked him until like, I, I don't think I like this author's writing and I'm being really negative and I feel bad. I think I'm gonna read some more because other than that, it is fun, but I can feel exactly where it's going. And it's, I'm not, like, I'm already tired and I kind of just want to move on to the next book. I think because I didn't mind the audiobook, I might just save the rest of it to listen to when I have like a slow day this week at work, hopefully tomorrow because it is Friday tomorrow. Um, but I think I might start in on the next book because yeah, this as a romance is just, it's skipping the romance part, which is my favorite part when two people are like figuring out that they like each other. Let me go get the other book. Okay, at this point in the video, I actually start reading this book, but I realized that it's based on real people in history 
And so I thought I wanted to do a little bit more research before I got into it. But just a side note, this book is excellent. I'm like a third of the way through. I don't know why you need to know that in this vlog, but now you do. Gosh darn it. Now, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna read this because it's easier. Guys, this is just objectively bad. Like I don't even feel bad anymore. <laughs> but it's like a fun kind of bad. Almost so that I want you to read it just so you can laugh with me. I'm 40 pages from the end. <laughs> and, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, this started off with some promise. And honestly, I feel like it could be fixed compared to Jane Austen. I just can't get over that. I am not kidding when I say this reads like fan fiction with no sex. Like there's no, oh. It's fan fiction because it was, it went from scene to scene. Like she really wanted to write certain scenes where they had a big speech or they were sharing their trauma and it just jumped from one thing to another. There was no transition. At first I thought there was gonna be no action because she's a bodyguard and there is a stalker and for one second they tell us that something happens off screen our main character wasn't even involved and i was actually i was pissed but there's a sort of twist that wasn't bad but it just it oh my god guys there is an epilogue and we don't really understand still why she's talking to us. And she did it the whole time. In the middle of staring at Jack, she said, you guys remember the movie Destroyers or something? Like, oh God. There's an epilogue and she gives us, I bet you're wondering about this side character and how they're doing now. Well, here's what's happening with them. Oh my God. I am so sorry to shit talk this book. If you like this book, I do see some fun in it. I feel like if we got more build up to the relationship, it could have been great. I feel like the characters are really sweet and funny, but my God, this was not good. But at least it didn't make me angry. Like this is a happy feeling. This actually, this is a comedy. I'm being such a bitch. I'm so sorry, but my God, this is nuts to me. <sighs> okay, well, that's that. I feel like I'm gonna edit this and feel like such a brat. But. That is, that is what I thought. Tomorrow I'm gonna try to start, thank you for listening. I have high hopes for that one. Well, like higher than this hope. Oh my God. I am in like such a good mood after reading this. So maybe you should try it. Um, honestly though, I did skim the last uh, two chapters. I was just about to log this into Goodreads as like a two star. And I see that one of my friends gave it five stars. So maybe this is just me being so mean. Oh my gosh, please, if you've read this book, let me know your thoughts. Oh, maybe I'm just a bitch. Excuse this, I just took a shower, but I'm listening to, thank you for listening, and I think I'm like four hours in, and it's sort of like a, a friends with benefits to hidden identity texting relationship to lovers. This is so fun, and I almost want the physical copy because although Julia Whelan is superb, she can do so many accents and genders, my God. Um, there's a lot of texting and emailing happening and I wish I could, I feel like I like reading that better on paper. So our main character meets this very handsome man in Vegas and she pretends to be someone and I'm guessing he's pretending to be someone. They hook up, but we don't see it, which, you know, is kind of a bummer, but whatever. And now in real life, our main character has agreed to do an audiobook for a romance as we knew from the synopsis of the book. She hasn't done it in like five years, I think. She refuses to do it now and she uses a pseudonym so no one really knows it's her. And she gets partnered on this book series with Brock something something. I forgot his name, I'm sorry. We're guessing that's a pseudonym as well. And so now they're communicating and I'm sure it's the same guy from Vegas because they were at some like book convention thing. But there is an award for audio narrating coming up in a couple months and they are obviously going to meet there and see each other. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, it's very different than I thought. I didn't realize it was going to be like a texting kind of relationship or like the flirting and the banter is happening via text and email and that's always really fun because it's really quippy and fast. Anyway, I've got to get to work.
it is the weekend guys it's the weekend officially i don't work overtime this weekend all is good i'm so excited also my husband just brought me home flowers so i got up to probably three quarters of the way through thank you for the listening and as i stopped listening i'm at a point where we could wrap it up right now and the book could have a happily ever after which means that the third act conflict is probably happening within the next couple pages and i'm scared because i want this to work out so badly i'm having so much fun i love these characters the the mistaken identity or like the hidden identity thing i'm loving but also i love a story about a main character finding themselves and dealing with grief and family drama so our main character swanee i don't think i've actually said her name she's pretending to be like three different girls at this point but swanee is very close to her grandmother who was kind of like a, a wannabe movie star but she is in an old folks home and she is suffering with dementia or alzheimer's or early onset something something and swanee is oof it's really tough to read about having to deal with that. Swanee herself is dealing with, um, she is actually a failed actress. So she was really about to make it big and she was in an accident that altered her face. She now wears an eye patch all the time because she has really bad scarring on her face. And so she thought at the time that she couldn't act anymore, but now she's trying to put herself out there because it, she realizes that it's something that she's really passionate about. And so she's dealing with that. She's dealing with her grandmother, her kind of absentee parents who her dad is really effing annoying. What's with dad's always being so effing annoying? I guess in real life that checks out, but we also have our main character having a best friend and they talk about things other than guys. So it definitely passes the Bechdel test. Her friend is an, a successful actress at this point. I don't know, I'm just literally loving everything about this book. So yes, I, at this point I'm nervous as to what this third act conflict is going to be. I feel like I can see it being several things, our character's not ready to open up, yada yada yada. Um, but I will soon find out because I'm definitely going to finish it tonight. Hey guys, so I finished, thank you for listening. Also ignore all those books on the floor. I was filming my book haul, which is probably up by now. Um, I kind of wish this had wrapped up at the third act conflict. Um, but that's from someone who doesn't like conflict that much. But just because I felt like I didn't really buy the third act conflict. Like I understand it was our main character really feeding into her own insecurities. So it was believable, but at the same time, then there was another conflict while they were like on a vacation setting, which is another trope that I just struggle with. So I think for some people, it could have really stayed as a, a great, you know, and fun time, but it did lose a little steam for me. All in all though, I think this was so fun and so well written. And it really feels like if you, if you like Rachel Lynn Solomon, if you like Weather Girl or what was it? The X Talk. Ooh, this one really felt kind of X talky, especially because, you know, there's like a podcast element in it. And then that one was radio. Anyway, it's getting late. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had fun. I'm giving it probably three and a half stars. And obviously the, the audio version, like Julia Whelan, her, she's just so good at narrating books. It's ridiculous. Just, it's crazy because like she plays the guy too. And he has an accent. But then sometimes he hams it up and sometimes he loses it and sometimes he uses a different accent but it still sounds like him don't know how she does it it's a fucking gift and no offense to julia whelan there wasn't that much spice in this one i mean there's a tiny bit i feel like it was a very tasteful amount but apparently i'm just a creepy whore what <laughs> i'm so glad that the majority of my viewers are women because uh y'all know i'm kidding Maybe. I think for the rest of the night, I'm gonna edit my book haul and try not to fall asleep. I wish I could like ask you how you're doing in real time. Is that weird? How are you? What are you doing? Well, obviously you're watching this video, so I'm gonna shut up. Bye. Okay, clearly I was losing it at that part of the vlog <laughs> and it did not continue. So here I am to wrap it up. Um, unfortunately, yes, I did not like this book. However, after, when was this? Like on Saturday or Sunday? It is now Tuesday. So with a couple days in hindsight, 
You know what's interesting is these characters were much more memorable than these, which is weird. So it's like, I want these characters? No, because I do like the intensity and the kind of real emotional depth that Julia Whelan's book gives me, just like uh, Emily Henry books or Rachel Lynn Solomon books. And that was lacking in here. But you, the other thing that was lacking in here were really good transitions or I don't know, any sort of depth, emotional, relationshipal, what? Relational? <laughs> what I mean to say is that I really like the characters in here and that is it. But it really did make an impression on me. Maybe because I disliked it so much, that could be said. That could be a theory. But what I wouldn't give to have this written by Julia Whelan or Rachel and Solomon or Emily Henry. Oh gosh, I'm still being a bitch. Okay, we're gonna stop talking. I'm glad I read these two books is what I'm saying. And um, if I can give you any sort of advice, I would say listen to both of these on audiobook, especially Julia Whelan's. All right, guys, I think I have blabbed enough. I don't think I have anything more to add. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me. Bye.